to Action Group Nightly. My name is David Rostow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Action Group. Please check us out at www.theoxengroup.com for all of your financial analysis and investment ideas needs. In tonight's Action Group Nightly for July 28th, I will be recapping the market today and talking about some of our positions that we took today, as well as our other current positions and exits. Finally, we'll be summing up with an update about our other portfolios, including Georgia's Corner, our extended value portfolio, and also our dollar and cents report. Finally, we'll be finishing up with the tomorrow's forecast and, as always, our disclaimer at the end of the video. Uh, for today, well, we had an update throughout the day and the market, um, but we did end in the red, actually, on the Dow and on the S&P. The Nasdaq did hold in the green. Um, we had good news coming from uh, jobless claims and pending home sales, but as we near the end of the day, we saw um, you know a lot of profit taking occurring on some gains that some people got in the day, and then I think also some reinitiating short sales. Uh, moving into tonight, as the vote um, appears to not be able, not likely to pass, although we've been hearing you know conflicting reports throughout the day. Um, jobless claims did come in below 400,000. It was the first time in a couple of months for that to happen. They beat the estimates of 415,000. And pending home sales are surprised on the upside after weak news on the new home sales and existing home sales, as they were up 2.4 percent month over month, and they beat the negative expectations for more than 3 percent on the downside. Um, I think that uh, continuing claims, though, is, is a report that a lot of people don't pay enough attention to and uh, should be paid attention to a little bit more. Um, those rose um, week over week, and uh, they continue to stay above that 3,500 line. Um, and you know, while initial jobless claims are, are showing a downward trend, um, continuing claims aren't showing a downward trend. And I think that that should be a worry of people um, that they aren't having. Um, and I do think that jobless... Uh, maybe the next issue that we have on the table after we get past this uh, debt ceiling crisis. Um, more attention diverted to jobs, and that will be another point um, of contention for um, Republicans and Democrats moving forward to the rest of the year. For us, um, we played today by basically just taking a lot of our positions and selling out of them. The gains we had, we want to take off the table. Some losses we had, we were willing to accept. Because uh, we wanted to be completely into cash going into tomorrow, except for a couple positions, a disaster hedge, and then a, a long losing position that we're holding right now. But uh, the market rose throughout the day. Um, that allowed us to uh, get a little bit of um, help on some longs. And then uh, profit taking and shorts took over in the afternoon, and we were able to, that also helped us um, um, on some of the short side things that we had. Um, for uh, one of the positions we're still holding is Lululemon. Um, we uh, sold the $55. Uh, puts on Lululemon um, uh, last week, um, and we are looking to hold on to those um, for a pretty good price um, for premium there. And uh, stock held up today was in the green, um, obviously on a little bit of a downtrend over the last week, but you know the market's been down, um, and held that 20-day moving average today. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. If it breaks through that 20-day moving average, um, be a little bit more worrisome about that $55 line, but that does seem to be a pretty pretty good support line. And that 50-day moving average is moving up towards very quickly. It should be at the 55 uh, mark by the end of next week. So as long as we hold 55 by the end of next week, I think that that will come out uh, sitting pretty for us. And we may actually add to it um, uh, selling um, uh, calls is uh, not too, I'm sorry, selling puts is not too, uh, not too much margin either for that. Um, then on the also we are in an uh, options play on the ProShares Ultra uh, Pro Short uh, QQQ, um, which is the inverse on the Nasdaq basically. Um, and the Nasdaq has not really participated as much in this pullback as the Dow and the S&P have, and we think that that trend is probably going to uh, we'll see a little bit more convergence of those um, over the next week if we continue to downside. Um, we, we like this more as mostly just a disaster hedge, you know, just in case something really, really heavy breaks down. It's not a huge position. We've already all locked in half of it for a nice 18% gain. Um, and, you know, we're seeing neutral on that right now. Um, and so that will uh, allow us to have, you know, if we do get a major pullback on the downside, um, this will do very well. Um, and at the same time, we can then add some intraday shorts and things like that to help to also uh, pull out some gains on the downside. Um, other than that, we did, as I said, go into mostly cash today, so we sold out four different positions we had. We uh, made 22% uh, selling uh, Netflix calls. We bought back those today. We sold the 285s um, earlier this week. We also made 4% return on investment selling the Dow August 20 
$34 puts um, as those were dropping after good earnings from them and then good earnings again today from DuPont. Um, we were able to make a nice gain on those when the market was up today. Uh, we did have to close out our long Disney position for uh, a little over a 3% loss today. Um, you know, I thought that was going to be a really good position with the news coming out about the, the Hulu um, acquisition happening, but the market's just been real tough. Um, and this was actually out of, we had about uh, s six longs going into this week. Um, and it was actually the only one of them that we had to, that we actually lost on. So pretty good that we were able to, despite the market conditions, only miss on one long there. Um, and then we did also lock in another 2% gain shorting, shorting oil with uh, SEO from yesterday. Um, for Giorgio's corner, um, Giorgio has been closing a couple positions recently, but he does still have two open positions. He's got a vertical put spread on the on U.S. Steel at the 42.41 that moved into the green. He's looking for that to retake the 41 line, and then his Exxon Mobil uh, sold vertical put spread is 77.50.75. Should hold up well as Exxon Mobil held the 80 line, even though they had weaker than expected earnings. Uh, we had a new article out today from the Dollar and Cents report. Um, uh, lead report researcher there, Mike Mackin, took a look at uh, historical um, changes from 2007 to 2010 between price performance versus uh, company metrics. And we found some interesting stuff about basically a lot of companies have been growing um, revenue and operating income, net income, um, and EPS over the last three years from 2007 levels, so pre-recession levels. They've improved drastically actually over those. But if you look at price performance on, on earnings per share, I'm sorry, on price to earnings ratios and on price performance, for the most part, a lot of your large caps have actually not done very well. Um, and, you know, the, the news has been really that small caps have been doing a lot better. Um, so we, we looked at the, a lot of those and we see a lot of the large caps is pretty undervalued. Um, and coming out of this debt, debt crisis, a lot of those are pretty attractive. We're actually right now in Oracle in our extended value portfolio. Um, and uh, Given that report, I like the looks of Microsoft. I think that they still um, have a lot of upside. Um, I think they're a company that's got to break out of their trend at some point here. And then uh, we also liked a lot of what we saw from Coca-Cola. And then on the extended value portfolio side, um, beverage equity analytics should be coming to you soon. I've uh, been on a little bit of delay here uh, dealing with this debt ceiling crisis um, issues and trying to get uh, trying to keep our positions afloat during that. It's been tough. Uh, it's been like pulling teeth and. Uh, had to put that to the wayside, but that should be out hopefully by the beginning of next week. Um, for tomorrow, uh, I think the market really, I mean, there's a lot of data, a lot of more companies coming out tonight, uh, tomorrow morning, but um, market revolving completely around the House vote tonight. If the House passes the debt ceiling onto the Senate, I think you see a good rally tomorrow. If it doesn't pass, I think we have more red, and it could be significant red. Um, there is GDP tomorrow morning. That is very impactful. Chicago PMI is impactful, and the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index are all, all impactful. But I think it will be those will help you determine how much in the green and how much in the red will be. If we get a market vote that I think if the House does, votes it down and GDP and those things come out good, I think you know the that will help mitigate some of the losses. But I think if those come out weak and we get the House vote down, could be very staring at another triple digit down day tomorrow. Earnings from Coinstar, Expedia, Mo Motorola, Starbucks tonight, solid most of those. I think uh, Starbucks did pretty well. Motorola, a little bit worse than expected. Expedia, I did not see, or Coinstar. Um, and then tomorrow morning, we've got Aon and Chevron and Merck before the market opens. That's going to do it for today. Visit us at www.theaxiogroup.com. Email us, call us, become a part of our 70% plus accuracy in picking stocks. That's it. Love you. Dude, oh my god. Now I have to fucking...